Hey guys, how are you doing today? This is Luke G with MTG with Luke G. I'm changing the structure a little bit on how I show cards and maybe I sound a little different. I'm hoping I do because I am using a different headset, a different mic, um, to maybe try and hope that I come out a little more clear and not so distorted and I want to apologize about that. But without further ado, I'm going to show you the structure that we have going right now. We're talking about black. My first impressions of black for this uh, set was pretty good for drafting anyways. Like I've said previously in other videos, that there's only 158 cards in the set. So you're going to be able to, if you if you want to splash into black or you want to uh, say you're going, you're going green or you're going white and you get a lot of really good white cards and you pick up like one or two decent black cards, you know, it's going to be really easy to fill that void and get a lot more black into there. See cards in this set that are just like pretty much towards a zombie or a cleric or whatever. And if you can make a theme deck, like all flyers and they're all spirits or something, that's going to be nice because there's a lot of profit from this set for that kind of deck. The first and first page I'm going to look at here is called first picks and bombs. The first pick isn't always a bomb and a bomb is always a first pick, but <laughs> but as far as first picks go, if there's no bombs in there, it's like the card you pretty much want to grab right away that's going to be better than most of the, probably all the rest of the cards in the pack. The first card we're looking at here for five is Fiend of the Shadows. Now, he is a 3-3 flyer, which doesn't seem too crazy yet, but whenever Fiend of the Shadows deals combat damage to a player, that player exiles a card from his or her hand. It could be any card. It could be a land it could be anything. Uh, most likely when this guy gets out on turn 5, there's not going to be a whole lot of land left in their hand, so you're going to be filtering out some of the cards they have left over, which is good, but then this is the best part here. Exiles the card from his or hand, but then you may play that card for as long as the, if the card remains exiled. So that's huge. Like, you could you know, you take away a card from them, and then you could be like, oh, well, okay, you, you exile the creature, I'm going to play that creature, it's mine now. Like, that's huge. Um, then you also have Sacrifice a Human to regenerate him, so to keep him alive, it's good that he has a way to protect himself. Uh, I don't think it's like a groundbreaking card, but it's definitely something that when you open up a pack, most other cards aren't going to be as good as this one, so you're probably going to pick this. Next. We have 3 for 3 2. Comes into play tap, so so far it doesn't sound too great, but when he enters the battlefield, target opponent loses 2 life. To have a 3 2 that comes into play that makes your opponent lose 2 life is just huge to begin with. And then he has Undying, and he comes back as a 4 3 that makes your opponent lose 2 life again. So I love that aspect. They're really doing, they're really taking care of the zombie aspect in this, in this set, and you're really seeing it more and more where these. Uh, zombies will come back from the dead, and that's kind of what zombies do. So that's cool that they're actually looking at that. Speaking of another zombie, uh, we got Mikius now. There was a white one last set, and now there's a black one, uh, which is cool. But he's cost six for a five-five with intimidate, so that by itself is already decent. Whenever a human deals damage to you, destroy it. That's broken. Like if you get that, and you're playing against someone that's playing a lot of like white. And a lot of cards that just have human, you know, that could be like human werewolf. Like, you know, you're playing lots of against like a lot of red, green, or whatever. This card's going to just destroy them. And then it says other non-human creatures you control get 1 plus 1 and have undying. This has got to be... For, for drafting, anyways. This card is uh, probably not as huge in in uh in constructed but it also it's it's pretty big in drafting the fact that it says other non-human creatures you could have any other flavor in your deck you could have wizards you could have spirits you could have whatever and they get one plus one and have undying which is huge this is the guy right here when you have your kill creature spells this is the spell this is the guy you want to save those spells for you want to get rid of something like this because if this guy hits play it's going to be like an oh shit moment to your opponent, and it's going to be ridiculous. Now next we have Zombie Apocalypse. I mean, everything about this card is just funny and awesome. Only thing I don't like is a sorcery, but it does cost 6, and if you make it to turn 6, which I'm sure you will uh, with black, because it has a lot of protection like that, 
Uh, you can return all zombie creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped, then destroy all humans. So that's just, I mean, that the, the, the flavoring for the card is just funny enough as it is. It's just awesome. So, pretty cool. I like it. And uh, those are your first picks there. And let's move to the next. Now, the other cards you should grab are these ones right here. This doesn't mean that... In, in some situations, these might be your first pick cards, because you may not have those other cards as an option, but these are also good as well. Alright, first one is Gravecrawler, 1 for a 2-1 that can't block. Um, you may cast him from your graveyard as long as you control a zombie. That's huge. I mean, just that always make sure that you can do stuff with your mana. Unless he gets removed from the game or exiled or something like that, you're always going to be able to do something with your mana, and that's a really cool aspect. Next, Halloween Journey. Sorcery, not too great, but target player draws three cards and loses three life. I'm going to explain to you why this is good. This is good because you can use it to finish off your opponent if he has three life or something left. You could be like, here, draw three cards, and then you, I win the game. That's not bad. But then also, you could use it on yourself. Black doesn't really have a lot of draw cards. Blue is usually the ones that have a lot of drawing cards. And to have something like this, I know it costs fives, it's a little expensive, but draw three cards? Losing three life isn't that big of a deal. To draw three cards, you have 40 cards in your deck. That's ridiculous. That's like drawing almost 6% of your deck for paying five mana and losing three life. Oh boy. That's, that's huge. Increasing ambition. This card is interesting because it's kind of like Diabolic Tutor. It costs five. You can search your library for uh, any card, and then you can put it into your hand. But then if you cast it from the graveyard, you can get an additional card, which is pretty cool. Um, it has flashback, which is good. It helps you really get to your threats. So like, say you did have like a Mikias in your deck, you can, and you drew this card. It gives you another option, another way to get that card, and that's not too bad. I like that it has flashbacks. It has some late game things where like maybe you could be like, oh man, I really need, you know, this card that destroys all creatures right now because I'm about to lose. Boom, flash it back, go get it. There you go. So definitely not a bad card. Next we have Tragic Slip and it's one instant common. Target creature gets negative one negative one till on a turn. It's not too bad, it's a decent early game card but then late game if you draw this, if like say you attack and then someone blocks and then like he still has some creatures left over, well one of your creatures died or one of his creatures died so morbid target creature gets negative 13 negative 13 that just kills a creature and the cool thing about that is there are creatures that say indestructible creatures that you can't destroy this card will take care of those which is cool there's actually a card in this set that is a 1-1 one, one creature that if you use this card on it'll kill because it doesn't say destroy it takes away counters on it which take which kills it which is awesome so definitely look for this card and there are more Let's check out some more right here. This one right here, Wake Dancer. It's 3 for a 2-2. Two, two. That's not too bad, but then it gets better. Morbid. Whenever he enters a battlefield, if a creature died this turn, put a 2-2 two, two Black Zombie token into play. That's not bad. I like that. You want to like get a couple of these guys in your deck if you can. It helps build some structure. helps put some threats on the board. Decent card. Then Highborn Ghoul. 2 for a 2-1 two, with Intimidate. Not too bad. Anything that's like a bear, pretty much, but has Intimidate, it's pretty nice. And then next, Death uh, Caress. Five for Sorcery. Not liking that, but Destroy Target Creature. Okay, we need some of those cards. We haven't really seen too many. If that creature was a human, you gain life equal to its toughness. So that's not too bad, considering I think there are five or six different flavors or different tribes in this uh, in this set. I think that you know there's a good there's a good cho chance that you're gonna have a human. If not, destroy a huge threat. For five mana, I would like it to cost less, but you can't have everything you want, so that's not bad. And I just want to go ahead and thank everybody for subscribing and joining up and viewing. I just recently had one of my videos go over 10,000 views, which is awesome. You know, I started this. Uh, about four or five months ago and you know I've been lately I haven't really had the time to really do a lot but I would like to really put as much effort as I can into all these videos and 
and I really enjoy that you guys are enjoying these videos and you know I want to thank you guys for checking them out and um, you know showing me the love and everything and you know I, I'd like to get a partnership um, who knows I've you know I've talked to some big youtubers and see if maybe they can send me some fans and everything like that because not only do I do the magic the gathering but I do you know just the gaming guys in general I do like World of Warcraft I'm gonna be doing a lot of Dota 2 when it comes up um, it's gonna be really awesome so the next color guys is gonna be red and look out for that one it'll be released right after this video is released I'm gonna try and get them all done today alright guys see you later